Sucklist's DWM might have just gotten out Sucklist by a new C-based window manager created by a 16-year-old software developer, which honestly is the best part about this for me. It's given me some new hope for the future of software development because the Superior X window manager not only has a smaller code base than DWM, but it's arguably much easier to customize. An endless customization of the user interface is one of the best reasons to use Linux, the BSDs, or any other open source OS, because you can tailor your desktop to different workflows, coding, video editing, research, gaming, and often in the late stages of someone's desktop ricing, as it's often called, they start using window managers like this instead of full desktop environments because there's a lot of tools that get bundled in with GNOME, KDE, etc. that you probably don't want to use. Because when you explore the vast ecosystem of packages in Linux, you're probably going to end up using a shell that's made by one person or development team and a file manager made by another and so on. And this is especially true if you're going for the minimalist build. Like years ago, I worked on a hobby project to make my own minimalist Linux desktop with Gentoo that idled at less than 100 megs of RAM, so literally 20 plus times lighter than a modern Windows desktop, and suckless tools ended up being a key component of achieving this since, at the time, DWM was the lightweight champion of window managers. But there's a big technical filter on the suckless tools, which is the fact that you have to manually patch the C code, which comes with almost no features that you'd want to have in it by default, like scroll back in the terminal or resizable gaps between your windows. You'd have to manually program those features in yourself or at least try to get uh, some of these different patches merged into your code, which can be easy if you're just applying a couple of them, but when you start applying many, many patches, it can get a little bit complicated, especially if you don't have some familiarity with C programming. Now, you might get lucky with some of the more popular suckless tools, like especially DWM. You might be able to find basically a pre-configured version of it, like Psydux Chad WM, that has a lot of the features and the eye candy that you're going to want, but you still then have to depend on this guy to keep his rice on his GitHub up to date, and you still have to go into the code and recompile and restart the program to change some other things other than the theme in Chad WM. I think hot reloading works for that. Uh, but in SXWM, you don't have to do any of this. Everything is configured essentially through a text file called sxwmrc. So you can see here that the first part of the configuration is the color themes, right? So let's say that I want to change the focused border color. So that's basically this uh, border you see that's kind of like a, I don't know, whitish blue, like light blue kind of color. So I go over to this hex color picker here and select this um, green color. I can go here into the text file, insert it, save the file, and then if I press the mod key plus R, boom, it now hot reloads and applies this green color to the border. Now in DWM, if you want to do this, you would have to recompile the program and then restart it. And since you're restarting your window manager, you're going to lose the session in all of your other windows. So if you've got GIMP open, if you've got uh, you know browsers and stuff like that, you're going to lose those sessions unless you recently saved. Maybe you could add in some kind of session manager to like save the state of those applications and then reopen them when DWM relaunches and create a script to relaunch DWM after it compiles. But needless to say, none of that is an out of the box feature like what we have here with SXWM. Uh, if we scroll down to the application launcher, so I could add in uh, a new app if I wanted to. So let's do bind mod plus G and we'll say that that's going to launch GIMP. So again, save the application and do my hot reload, which is just mod key R. Uh, and you can also change, um, well, the mod key is bound to the super key by default, but this is another thing you can change just like DWM, bind it to alt or control or whatever you want. Uh, and so now I should be able to do mod key G and 
I don't know if this is going to open in a floating window or what. Okay, so it looks like it does both, actually. Uh, so yeah, you can change pretty much all of the same settings in here that would be uh, in like the config.h file in DWM. So you've got different hotkeys for like remas uh, resizing the master area and then increasing and decreasing the gaps in between. So that's, what is it, mod key equals and mod key minus. That's what that does. Um, and then this is the command to reload the config. So you can even change this too if you want to bind it to something other than mod key plus R. Uh, and then this is for all the different workspaces. So again, kind of like a DWM, well, there is a bit of a difference. So the similarity is that you've got nine workspaces, which I think is the same with a DWM. By default, obviously, you can add more and you can add more here too. Um, but one difference between workspaces and tabs in SXWM is that workspaces have um, basically just windows are bound to one workspace. So it's, well, I guess more of a traditional workspace. Like if you've uh, worked on other operating systems that have either, I think in Windows they're called workspaces and some other like Linux distros, they'll call them virtual desktops. Uh, but generally that's how they work where your windows are bound to one workspace. But in DWM, you've got the tags where windows can actually belong to multiple tags and you can view multiple tags at once. So you can basically bring all of your windows onto one screen. So obviously the difference in tags and workspaces is something that might be a deciding factor for you, whether you wanna use DWM or SXWM. Uh, another one of the cool features that are built into SXWM that I think most people end up manually building into DWM or at least manually patching in are the gaps between the windows, right? So uh, in vanilla DWM, I'm pretty sure that the um, tiled windows, in fact, if we go back and look at the uh, picture here, yeah, it's all kind of right next together. I mean, there's a little bit of a border in here, I guess, but there's not really the gaps of empty space in between the windows. So this is another one of those things where I'm sure it differs from person to person. Personally, I do like having a little bit of gap, a little bit of space in between the uh, windows, like just a couple pixels of empty space, or at least having the option to do that and then be able to change the size of those gaps or even remove them if I really want to. So again, you would have to add that feature into DWM with a patch, recompile, reload, and so on. But don't have to do that with SXWM. Uh, now, speaking of patches, actually, this is one of the areas where I will say uh, SXWM ends up being maybe a little bit harder to customize than DWM because obviously, if you do understand how to patch in the C code with like, um, let's see, I think full gaps. Yeah. So like this would be... Uh, which you would have to patch into DWM to get gaps in there. If you understand how to install these patches, but maybe not how to write them yourself, sort of like how you might know how to install mods in a video game, but not know how to write the mods yourself, then DWM will probably end up being a lot better for you because there's a lot of patches or mods available for it on their website. And I'm sure that you can find more elsewhere since again, DWM is really popular amongst desktop minimalists. And there's lots of pre-configured builds that you can find online too and start hacking on if you want to have uh, maybe a better starting point than just a vanilla DWM setup. And it's also again, important to point out that SXWM is being maintained by someone who is well in school right now and he's taking exams and is probably going to be a little bit busy with that over the next couple of weeks and obviously this person has a life so who knows how much they'll be able to commit by themselves to development of this project of course it's open source and so that's part of the reason i'm making this video so that more people become aware of it and then maybe he gets help with patches if he wants to imply them but the really good thing about this window manager is that it's largely a drop-in replacement for dwm both programs function very similarly especially if you use tags in dwm like traditional workspaces and well not like tags Last thing I wanted to cover was the structural differences in the code base of these two apps. So in DWM, as you can see in the LS here, 
it's broken up into a few different files. You've got the uh, config.h and you've got drw.c, you've got dwm.c, which is where the majority of the code is, util.c, and so on. Um, but if we go into the sxwm folder and do an ls, or sorry, I gotta do this in the src folder, uh, you can see that pretty much it's sxwm.c is where um, all the configuration is. There is, there is also a config.h, or actually go in here. Um, there's not quite as much in here as the config.h file with dwm, but if we compare the main source code file, so it's gonna be sxwm.c and it's gonna be dwm.c respectively. Uh, each one, well, the sxwm.c file is a little bit smaller. So 1693 lines of code compared to 2165 lines of code. And again, almost all of it is just in that one C file. There's essentially just sxwm.c and parser.c, which, uh, oh, if I do it correctly, you can see is a relatively small file. Now, I'm not saying that this is better and SXWM uh, probably isn't really seriously trying to compete with uh, DWM. I think it was probably just a hobby project to see if he could create a window, like basically, could he recreate DWM, but smaller? And I would say he did. I mean, now again, comparing 2165 lines of code to like 1600 something lines of code, it's really not a big difference, right? It's like, uh, less than a kilobyte of difference in the binary size and probably even less than that when it comes to the RAM usage. And honestly, I don't know if going with this single file approach uh, is really going to be that much better because when patches start becoming available, if and when patches start becoming available, everything's just gonna end up going in this one file. And I think this one file might end up getting really bloated and just be more difficult to manage instead of like DWM, which has the different logic for different parts of the program broken up into different files as you would expect with modern software development. But overall, I think that this is a very cool project and I think the person behind it has a very bright future in minimalist software development. They're part of the next generation in the fight against bloat. Tell me your thoughts about this project in the comments below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.